And again, welcome back to Inside the Valley on this Sunday morning. Well, the National Butterfly Center there in Mission is hosting a great festival that's coming up soon, the Texas Butterfly Festival. If you've never been out there before, you need to go check it out. Great things are happening out there at the center right now. Talk a little bit more about the festival itself. We have Mariana Wright on the show. Great to always see you. Good morning. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, Texas Butterfly Festival. For someone, say like myself, I've never been to it before. What's it all about? What could I expect? Well, this is the 21st annual, so the festival has evolved to serve our growing population of people interested in learning more about butterflies. Mm -hmm. And the Rio Grande Valley is the richest place in the nation for butterflies. So we have walks and talks. We have demonstrations, how to make your own banana brew, how to plant your own garden. We have uh, basic identification uh, lessons. We also have lots and lots of games for children, like pin the tail on the swallow tail and oh, wow. uh, all the festival stuff. So there's face painting and mm -hmm. games and giveaways. But mostly we want people to come out to a safe place where they can experience nature during the peak of butterfly season and learn more about the diversity of butterflies, the purpose of butterflies, and uh, grow appreciation for butterflies. Now this is really the peak of butterfly season right now. This is the migration, right? Like a lot of people probably notice a lot more butterflies. Yes, mm -hmm. and the front that came through uh, just the other day is really pushing everything along mm -hmm. and things with slightly cooler temperatures should begin bursting into bloom and this this last week of October is really when it starts to get kind of crazy with the butterflies. Yeah so what kind of butterflies really um, are, are attracted or that you see there at the National Butterfly Center? Well we're averaging about 70 species a day so wow. it's it's tremendous mm -hmm. and we have more butterflies than the average nature center because we plant sp very specifically for them. We plant their favorite nectar and host plants for 365 days a year. Right. So while this is a peak season, I believe um, March or April, we had 97 species recorded that month. Wow. So as long as everything is growing really well, we're going to have a, tri a tremendous uh, number of species. Uh, too many to list. Right. Uh, but you'll get to see the favorites and the familiars, whether that's the snouts that you uh, see crossing the highway mm -hmm. or the monarchs that everyone gets, uh, you know, excited to see during this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking about the festival, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity for families who may have just moved here to the valley. They don't really know about the huge butterfly migration that we have here every year. Um, this is a great opportunity for the families to kind of learn together. You know, as you were saying earlier, you can learn why butterflies are so important important, what they do. Um, what is it? I mean, do they, how long do they stay there at the center for their admission? Some of them may live out their whole life cycle there at the wow. center, yes. Others, like the monarchs that are passing through, may come down to rest, mm -hmm. to refuel, or to lay eggs mm -hmm. on their way to Michoacan. So it just depends on the butterfly. Some of them get blown up here when we have a, a southern wind instead of a northern wind. Yeah. And uh, if they can find host plants, that's great. They'll lay their eggs and we'll get another generation of that tropical or stray species. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's hide and seek every day. Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, the butterflies like to come out after about 10 a.m. when the sun starts shining. Okay. They'll come out and bask and their wings will dry off. That's when they start looking for food mm -hmm. and, and for a mate. So it's all about breeding and feeding and uh, tremendous, tremendous opportunities to observe butterflies. Uh, often if they're flying, you don't really get to see them, but when they're nectaring, mm -hmm. they're, they're settled down, you really get to see the color of their eyes, the stripes on their antenna, the details and in the different species. What is it about the valley that really attracts the butterflies? Is it the heat that we have here? Is it just because we're, you know, in between, you know, Mexico and then we've got the United States and so we're kind of right there along the border. Is, is, what is it about? It's everything. It's our geography, as yeah. you said, here uh, on the Gulf and, and the air currents that we get, as well as our heat and our 365 day a year growing season. Mm -hmm. The fact that butterflies can find food here all year long is very important. We have about 150 species of butterflies that are native to this area. Okay. And then another 150 to 180 that can be found here because they belong in Texas or, you know, the southern part of the U.S. 
or northern Mexico. Wow. So really, I mean, the butterflies are just blowing in from everywhere. Yeah, they <laughs> converge know? here. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, speaking about the festival again, where is it? It's obviously going to be at the center. Uh, when is it? Is there a mission fee as well? No, on community day. Every year we open for free from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. We want everyone to get a chance to come out at no cost and experience the National Butterfly Center, experience the beauty of wild butterflies and have fun. Mm -hmm. And so it is free from 9 to 2, games, vendors, educational activities. We'll be doing all of that. And then uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we have expert guided field trips from Falcon Dam to South Padre Island. And those you do have to register for online. Okay. And then you get to go all over the Rio Grande Valley. You get to choose your field trips and go search for specialty butterflies. And of course, um, there's always other wildlife we encounter. Oh, out I there can too. imagine for sure. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about you know the the field kind of tours. You know, um, when when you're going around, you're walking around, and you, I guess you can see different types of uh, plantation and and the butterflies themselves. Uh, is there ever been anything really kind of out of the ordinary that you've seen on those? Every year we wind up with a, a chase butterfly or a U.S. record butterfly. Right. Things that even the folks who live here all the time have not seen. Last year it was a black hair streak, and that was actually at Hugh Ramsey Park in Harlingen. That wow. was one of the stops on a on a field trip. Mm -hmm. And as you said, every area we go to has different habitat, has different vegetation, and so you're likely to see different butterflies. The coastal trips, people get a chance to see the Zami hair streak, for example, mm -hmm. and then uh, going up to Falcon Dam, they may see radically different butterflies and. And actually, this year we hear Falcon State Park is better than it has ever been in That's terms fantastic. of their their butterfly gardens. Wow. The rains this summer really helped that. And then, real quickly here, where can folks get a little bit more information, uh, not just about the festival, but also about the center? Well, you can go to nationalbutterflycenter.org, and if you're really just interested in monarchs, for mm -hmm. example, this iconic species that everyone recognizes, we have missionmonarchs.com. Oh, okay. So you can get to either of those sites from nationalbutterflycenter.org as well as the Texas Butterfly Festival site. Sounds like you've definitely got a couple amazing days planned at the center there. And also, too, uh, not only do you have the festival going on there, but you also have a lot of educational stuff for uh, students to come out during the weekend. We do. We do field trips five days a week, mm -hmm. and uh, we have an enormous uh, breadth of lessons and, and activities for traditional field education, supporting STEM and other curriculum objectives. And then we also have volunteer opportunities on the weekend and walks and talks. So most of those can be found on our Facebook page. Okay, perfect. Well, Mariana, it's always great to see you on the show here. Thanks so much for stopping by, uh, talking about the Texas Butterfly Festival. It's coming up. I know it's going to be a good one. Posted some information there for you folks. If you'd like to see what's happening or learn a little bit more about the Texas Butterfly Festival, call this number as well, 583-5400. Don't go anywhere when we come back on Inside the Valley on this Sunday morning. Well, it's that time of year again. We're talking about Boo at the Zoo. Did I scare you? Don't go anywhere.